Hey folks, how are we going? A lot of emails coming through about citrus trees and in particular mandarin trees. So I thought today let's talk about mandarins. The probably the top five best mandarins or the best five mandarins you can grow in your garden. I've got a few here, so let's start. Now what I've got here uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven more citrus that I'm growing in pots. Now these aren't going, this isn't going to be its final resting ground. This pot is way too small for a citrus. Let's get that out of the way. They need to be in a half wine barrel. You can grow dwarf varieties, but I'm, I'm of the opinion that I like my normal standard large ones in a wine barrel as well, and I can prune them down and keep them small. That's just my preference. Now what we have here, so forget about the area they're growing in because they can be grown in pots or ground, on a hill, in a valley, whatever you like, you know, in an open space. It's the variety that we're talking about here. Now what I've got in front of me here is a mandarin tree. Now, funny enough, the first variety that I've sat down next to to talk to you about, I've never grown before. <laughs> but I know the, the mandarin here, afuare or fa, afuare, Afore, you can pronounce it yourself. Have a look at it. My Greek tonality is really annoying me sometimes because I try to pronounce every letter in the word. This variety here, I reckon, is a medium-sized mandarin, thin skin, almost like well, larger than your typical imperial, which is your common one you get at your local uh, uh, grocery or a green grocer. This has got a little bit of fruit on it. Again, a mandarin. Generally, most mandarins uh, will grow, and you can see the leaf on this here being of a smaller size, similar to that of the imperial tree, if you've ever seen the imperial mandarin, which is a medium size, small to medium size mandarin, thin skin, attached to the flesh, easy to grow, only grows about two, two and a half metres tall, comfortably, it can get taller but it gets a bit sort of lanky. Now this one here I reckon will be about the same in height, about two metres comfortably, so in a wine barrel or a large pot, keep it about one and a half metres quite comfortably. Again. I'm not pruning this one back because it's already just put on its new growth up there. It hasn't stretched. We've got an open vase shape in the middle. Perfect for it. So that's one variety to think about. Full of fruit, by the way. And if you're asking me what sort of soil I've got in there, well, that's just typical compost and garden soil. Over here, what I've got here now is a Allendale mandarin. A larger tree by nature by comparison to the imperial. So I'm sort of setting that as a standard in size for mandarin trees, which is about a two, two and a half metre tall. I reckon this tree will get about three metres, a bit wider. You can see by nature it's got a bit more of a stretch in it. Larger leaf too. Does, you can't really tell that much. I can from here. There's no new growth on it. I've taken it off because it already stretched out. The mandarin on this is again a large, medium to large mandarin, thin skin, juicy but sweet without that sort of acidic or citrusy um, uh, taste to it. So it's a bit, just a, ni a nice sweetness in it. Allendale, very juicy fruit as well. Easy to grow, a very easy plant to grow. Again, a lot of fruit on this. And the pot, again, too small. If you're gonna grow them, the only reason I've got, got them in this here, because I haven't got my large pots yet, and I needed to get them out of the smaller pot that they were in. Ah, top soil for now. See how it's crossed over? While we're talking about soil, this is what you don't need happening. What I do with this is basically run my fingers over the top like that, loosen it up, and that way the water penetrates through. If you don't do that, it sits on top, and you can see it's sort of got a bit of moisture at the bottom there. It's, it is moist. It's not too moist, but there is enough moisture in it, and it's not a bad thing to let a citrus tree dry out a little bit between its watering stages. Over here, what do we got? We've got a emperor. Now this is probably one of the more common ones you've seen. Well, it is one of the more common ones. You'll find them in your local uh, supermarket, green grocers, uh, veggie store. You normally would find your imperial, you know, at once upon a time it was imperial and emperor mandarins. The emperor, the photo doesn't actually depict the right sort of mandarin that it is. It's the wrinkly type one. So it's the one where the skin is detached from the flesh inside and it peels really easy. Again, it's not as tart as your imperial. Uh, it's quite sweet, easy to eat. A little bit of seed, not too much. A bigger tree by nature as well, so much bigger leaf. You can see there, have a look at that leaf there. Grows bigger, so this will grow to two, three metres comfortably. Um, again, I can keep these down to about one and a half, two metres tall in the pot, and I'll be quite happy with that. I can keep them down to about a metre and a half. About that height there, I'd be quite happy with that as well. Uh, you've seen them on my mum's place, or in my mum's place, in the backyard there. 15 year old citrus trees, they're two and a half metres in diameter, and about a metre and a half tall, and a couple of hundred fruit on each one of them, and that's because we just thin out the new growth. We work on the existing growth, and we get lots of it. So the emperor is a large, wrinkled sort of fruit, detached from the flesh as well, the skin that is. Easy to grow, and again, if you've got hard soil, 
break it up before you water it. No good doing it after. And what we have here is a honey mercot. That's the name of the mandarin. Another beautiful mandarin. This is probably really Oh, almost as sweet. Well, that's actually, no, I, I put it up there with the Japanese seedlers. Uh, that's another one that I've got in the private gardens. The honey mercot is sweet like honey. Very, very juicy uh, fruit as well. Medium to large size fruit and a tree that will probably grow at least to three metres comfortably. You can see this upright growth already. Now, for me, it's not going to produce any fruit on this and see all these spines on it, these pricks. Look at that, how prickly it is. So it can become quite uh, uh, an aggressive plant if you don't maintain it. So I've got to take all this off. This is useless to me. I don't want my fruit coming from here up, otherwise I'll never reach it. So that's going to come off right down here. You can see where the bulk of the growth is. It's down there. So all this, I don't need this. This is a waste. So if you're going to keep your trees down small, cut them off in the middle like that. And that way you don't lose too much energy in the top and get no foliage at the bottom and you don't get your fruit up the height. So a honey mercot, beautiful medium sized to large mandarin, a very juicy, thin skinned um, and another plant easy to grow. So they all have a very similar habit in growth. So it's not something that's going to be quite unusual as far as one tree to the other is concerned. Uh, a mandarin tree will probably be the smallest out of your citrus trees, unless you're going with a dwarf, dwarf variety, obviously. So if you're comparing it to a lemon tree or an orange tree, they're going to be a smaller tree. Not as wide as an orange tree, probably a little bit more upright, but again, nowhere near as big as your lemon tree, that's for sure. Uh, honey mercot, sweet. Think of honey and mandarin flavour, combine that together, and that's the flavour of it. A uh, little bit seedy, I think it is, or the Allendale's actually seedier than this one here. Uh, this one will have a few seeds, that's for sure. Uh, that's why I love the Japanese seedless. This is another Emperor. Now it's put on a lot of top growth on it and it's set fruit as well. Um, you know, in, in normal circumstances, I'd probably say to you, you know, let it do its run its course in fruiting, but because it's only so small and only just set, it's. Uh, going to take at least three to six months to ripen or grow properly and ripen. The honey mercot is one of the later varieties to ripen so they're very late into spring, next springtime before we even get to harvest any fruit. This one is a bit earlier but again from December till then, six months, it's a long time to wait and it's going to probably put more growth up there. So this is the one that I'm going to take right down now. Or I'm going to take this down in size because I don't want to waste any more growth on it or energy growing up at the top and I wanted to start from down below. I want the, uh, I'll take that off completely there, like that. Leave those little wispy bits there like that, that's okay. So I wanted to bush out from here and as it does, we'll establish better branching on it. Again, an emperor tree grows taller than your imperial and all these lower branches, I don't need them. I want it to be about there, that's about the height I like. Nice and clean like that, maybe a couple more. And we're happy. What I've got here is a Japanese seedless, folks. And if you remember in the past, if, you, if you've been following me on our social uh, posts every morning, this one here in particular got a big burst of water out of nowhere once we'd let it dry out for too long a period, which it was quite content with that. But that sudden change in moisture level and content in the soil put it into shock and it dropped all its leaves. But since then, it's settled down, it's adapted to this climate here and there's a lot of new good growth coming on, a lot of new shoots coming up. So we're not going into flower mode so much. There are a couple of flowers, not too many, a lot of leaves coming on, so I'm happy about that. Now, Japanese seedless, a large mandarin by, by nature, very, very, very juicy. No seeds, well, that's a great bonus to it. Uh, the skin is attached to the flesh, uh, almost like a mandarin, uh, sorry, like an orange, but slightly darker in colour. So it's not that bright orangey colour, it's a slightly darker orange, burnt orange colour on it. Very, very juicy fruit. Um, I actually love this variety out of all the mandarins. I actually, I love them all, but this one I've taken a liking to of lately. And I had one earlier on, uh, many years ago, died on me uh, for whatever the reason. But this one here is settled down. This is a mint garden bed. Doesn't need a lot of water, and thankfully the mint doesn't need a lot of water, so it's a good combination between the two. Uh, grows bigger as a, as a mandarin, bigger leaf, much bigger leaf than all the other varieties. Almost like an orange tree by comparison. So out of the mandarin trees, I reckon this will probably be the biggest. Um, by nature, uh, all the others will grow big as well if you don't prune them. But uh, if you want to try a mandarin and you don't like the seeds, 
go with the Japanese seedler. It's a really good plant to grow, easy to look after. Uh, and again, it settles down once it loses its leaves. If you forget to water it or you water it too much, it comes good. And there you have it folks, five varieties to think about when you're growing a mandarin tree or selecting one. You've got a foray, you've got Allendale, Emperor, Honey Mercot, Japanese seedless, and make it six is your imperial, which is the most common variety that you find at your local supermarket. Small mandarins. If you go by my choice, medium to large fruit tree as a citrus or a mandarin tree, I'd go with a Japanese seedless. Beautiful fruit, no seeds to, to worry about. Now, being a mandarin tree and all different varieties of fruit on them, they all st still need the same care and attention. They all grow in similar habits and as a citrus tree, they are susceptible to citrus gall wasp, scale and obviously overwatering and wet feet. They don't need that. So make sure it drains well, compost them well, use our black root, use our liquid gall and Nikkei butch all the time on them. They'll love you for it and prune them regularly. Prune them regularly. Don't prune them all at once but a little bit throughout the year and that way you never lose its cycle of fruity. And if you want to see more great products like that, check it all out on our website, thesillysgarden.com. From Eva Silly, Maresi.